Hello everyone, I'm back, finally I'm back, I'm sorry, I've been insanely busy with commissions, sketches, Star Destroyer, uh, you name it, I've been building stuff left, right and centre and I really haven't had uh, much time to scratch myself, let alone do stuff for the channel, but I have freed up a bit of time at the moment and I'm going to just do a quick kit review, this is going to be followed by a build review very soon as well. Uh, this is of the Tamiya 135 scale M41 Walker Bulldog. Now this is uh, just continuing on in our classic plastic uh, themed series on, on some of the older Tamiya kits. Um, but before I begin, I would like to give a quick shout out to another YouTuber, uh, Legendary Builder. Now most of you that see my videos would know I'd like to support uh, the youngsters. And um, you know, older modelers come from younger modelers and... Um, it, it is really good to encourage them as, as much as we possibly can. Legendary Builder has a great little YouTube channel. He does some awesome stop motion stuff. He builds so many kits. Uh, he's very, very busy. And uh, it, I'll put a link in the description below. If you could take, uh, you t uh, take a, a moment, go across to his channel and uh, just subscribe. I know he'll love it. He's hoping to get to 50 subscribers. I'm hoping we might be able to push him up to 100. Uh, it would mean a lot to him and, uh, and me as well. That would be great. Now, kit, 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 135 scale Walker Bulldog by Tamiya. And this kit originally came out in 1973, so it has been around the block. It's an old girl, at least the mould was made in 1973. Um, yeah, it has been around for a while. The tank itself has also been around for a while, so the Walker Bulldog um, has got quite an extensive history too, and we'll cover that a little bit uh, in a minute. But first I just want to show you... So we've had a look at the box art. First, I just want to show you the decals that come with the kit. Uh, so there's two paint schemes that come with the kit, and we'll touch that when I show you the instructions. But uh, one's for a Japanese tank, one's for an American tank. Now, I'm going to use the decals for the American tank, but I'm not going to do just a plain old drab green um, paint scheme. I really am not a fan of them. I just find them boring. I just, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know, I, I just, I just, yeah, I can't get excited about doing a drab green. So I've come up with a little solution with the help of another YouTuber and we'll cover that in a minute. But let's have a look at the kit. So everything comes in plastic bags, typical uh, Tammy affair. Now normally I get the plastic bags and I throw them out, but with this kit I would say hold on to them and I'll show you why in a minute. But if we have a look, it's not an overly complex kit. It's very simple, but the detail is lovely. Even for such an old kit, the detail is great. Um, all the injector pin marks, typical Tamiya, they're all hidden. Uh, just lovely. So you've got nice moulding on the deck there and on the front. Very simple, but great. Love it. Uh, underside of the hull. So we've got some detail under here as well. We've got the uh, standard holes for the battery packs and running gear and all sorts of stuff if you want to do that, but I'll fill those. Um, sand back is a little mould seam here, which I'll just get rid of. You can see it there. Sand that back. Otherwise, the bottom of the hull is very, very neat and tidy. And all your suspension arms, everything's already in place. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite quick, easy. There's not going to be much um, mucking around fixing up parts on there. The turret, so it's quite a big turret, so it is a light tank, technically it's a light tank, it was uh, the weight of the vehicle itself was, was quite heavy in comparison to World War II vehicles, so if it actually had to come out in World War II it would have been a medium vehicle, but it was designed to engage, in theory at least, Russian medium tanks um, with its 90mm gun and give them a bit of trouble. But uh, yes, let's have a look, so you can see the detail on here, there's some nice welded detail Along the top of the turret there, very basic, decent uh, rivets, yeah. It'll come up a treat with a bit of painting and some little bit of cast detail on the underside of the turret. Very basic once again, but fun to build. Really good to build. Now it comes with three crew fig three crew members rather, one crew member and uh, two infantry. So these little guys, um, you can use them in a little diorama, and you've got your tank commander, obviously, uh, set up there, and all the bits and pieces on here. Pretty standard for Tamiya uh, back then. They're not too bad. They'd actually paint up quite well. 
Um, mole seems to, to clean up on the sides, so if you really want to have a crack at them, uh, they would actually look pretty good. Um, certainly you could get some you know, nicer aftermarket resin jobs, but uh, there's nothing wrong with those if you just want to have a play around and experiment a little as well. Uh, 50 cal, love it. <laughs> 90 millimeter. And uh, all your various uh, Kutramov, however you pronounce it. <laughs> Sorry, I've had a few wants. No, just kidding. Uh, no, so we've got uh, fuel tanks, uh, external stowage, yeah, all the little arms for the side of the vehicle, for the side of the turret, little grab arms, all that sort of stuff. Uh, pretty simple. All molded really well. Uh, there's a little bit of flash on some of the parts. I mean, it is an older, older mold, guys and girls, so you are going to get a little bit of that, but it's nothing too drastic as well. Uh, injective seam marks are all, all hidden once more. The only part where you can sometimes have a problem is on the back of the tracks there. You can see it there. It is hard to spot. On some models, when you paint them up, you'll, you'll notice them. On this one, I don't think you will. I think they're going to be hidden quite well. But you really have to look for them if you're going to spot them. Polycaps. Love polycaps. And we've got our tracks. So a bit of sanding involved with the... Uh, Road wheels, sorry, not tracks. Bit of sanding involved with the road wheels. The detail on them's really nice. It's just uh, once again just the seams of the older mould, but uh, you know the, the mould is thirty plus years. It's uh, it's lived a long life. So would it be forty plus years? Wow, it's been around for a long while. But yeah, let's just put that down for a second. I'll grab the tracks. Okay, so we've got the tracks here as well. The tracks, standard vinyl tracks, uh, pretty common, especially on the older kits, pretty common. Uh, these are the ones that uh, you link together and then you melt it down with the uh, screwdriver to seal the two of them. Uh, I actually really don't bother doing that. I find the super glue works really well and just clip them together with a, a, a coat hanger or something like that. Not a coat hanger, excuse me, a clothes peg and uh, it'll dry very very well and usually I haven't had any issue with stretch after that either so it doesn't really come apart. I make sure to support the joint but it always works well I haven't had any problems. Uh, last thing that you need is don't throw out one of the plastic bags that comes with the kit so I've taken all the bags off all the parts. The reason why I say don't throw out the bag is because you are going to need one believe it or not uh, depending on what you want to do but you, you may end up needing it. Uh, so Timmy gives you a good rundown of the vehicle here, uh, lots of information there. There was over, I mean obviously times have changed since this was made, um, if I'm not mistaken there were over 20 operators formerly that used to use this vehicle and there's uh, well, about 7 current, probably the most notable of which is the Republic of China which has updated their uh, their little versions of the, of the tanks, the M41s. Uh, so still kicking around, they have been in Korea, Vietnam, Bay of Pigs, Somalia, they've been all around. So these little tanks have, have certainly had a long, long life. Uh, instructions, very basic, as you could probably tell by looking at the kit. So very, very simple. Sand that, sanding the barrel down won't be too hard. You can get an aftermarket one, but this kit's so cheap. Um, you spend, you'll end up spending more on the aftermarket barrel than you will buy in the kit. It's, it, I don't see much point to it. So just uh, have a little bit of patience. Sand down the barrel. I'll show you how, to, how I do it on the build video when we do them. Uh, not too hard. And you can see all the external storage parts there and some nice reference photos. Uh, and as we were talking about before with the screwdriver on the, the vinyl tracks. Uh, a couple of crewmen, and there we go. It's pretty much done. Uh, markings. We've got uh, the American and the Japanese uh, markings there too. And then there's the other version of the Japanese tank. Sorry, I said there was two versions earlier. I meant there's two Japanese, but there's three overall. Yeah. Uh, so two Japanese variants, one with the national flag and the other one with the little tiger face. Uh, up to you whether you want, you want to do them. Uh, paint scheme's the same otherwise but uh, it's just the markings on the exterior that's different. Uh, yeah, M41 Walker Bulldog. Great little kit. Interesting little tank. Um, had a, has had and is still having an interesting life. 
and uh, was used for self-propelled guns, used to APC, all, all sorts of things. So quite a quite an interesting little vehicle. Now what I found fascinating about this is with the tanks themselves, you would have seen it on other vehicles as well, you've got your canvas covers. Now this typically stops water and dust and stuff like that getting in around the, the joins and seeping in around the turret. Uh, can't think of what you call that now. Mantlet. Uh, run around the mantlet and into the vehicle itself. Now it's not moulded on the tank. All right, so it's not, not actually moulded on the kit. So with the vehicle itself, it, it is straight from the box. It is without that cover. Um, however, that's still correct. It doesn't mean it's incorrect. It's still correct. You could have it with or without the cover. But if you wanted to do it, and uh, this is where this is where I just love these these old stuff. I'm sorry, I'm you know, I'm prattling on. Uh, if you wanted to do it, Tamiya actually includes a set of instructions on how to set up a canvas cover for the vehicle using the plastic bag that you supply that the kit supplied in. Uh, so you don't need to go out and buy anything fancy to do it. It goes uh, through it here and explains how to do it. A few bits of stretch. Uh, sprue, plastic bag, and a few little offcuts, and you're done. Um, I thought that was really neat. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to add that to the vehicle yet. I'm still yeah, I'm and ahhing about it. Uh, I will know once I know what final colour scheme I'm going to do, uh, whether or not I will attempt it. The colour scheme, as I was saying before, uh, I'm not going to be doing just a plain old drab green. I am going to be doing... Uh, one like a uh, M41 Bulldog in World of Tanks. Now, which one I'm not 100% sure of, but I have hooked up with another uh, YouTuber, uh, Original Esk, E S Q. I'm assuming it means Esquire. I'll have to double check with him, but Reginald is going to send me um, some images of an M41 Walker Bulldog he has in his garage in World of Tanks. I haven't gotten that far up this line in World of Tanks. Especially not lately. I haven't been able to play the game all year. <laughs> I've just been too busy. But he's going to supply me with some uh, excellent reference photos. And uh, I'll put them in the build uh, when we do it as well. So you can have a look at the reference photos versus what I'm doing. Just a different paint scheme. I'm sure you'll find some historical, uh, or historically accurate um, photos out there. But I really just want to play around with it. Have some fun. Get away from... The, the olive drab, just, you know, go out and do something different. Uh, and just, re you know, give this old kit a uh, new lease of life. It's uh, it's still a lovely kit. So definitely worth definitely worth adding to your collection if you want, uh, want something a bit different. Uh, so, M41 Walker Bulldog by Tamiya, 135 scale. Awesome. Love it. I'm sure I'm going to have a great time building it. And that build video will be very soon, boys and girls. So don't worry. The tank itself, historically, is actually quite amazing. I didn't know uh, a great deal about it. I knew of the tank, I knew a little bit of it, but I didn't know a great deal about the history of it and the fact that it was still in service in some nations today in some decent numbers too. So, uh, still around, still kicking, still being updated. Uh, once again, everyone, please do us a favour, have a look at Legendary Builders channel. Um, support the youngsters in the hobby. Um, uh, big addicts come from little addicts, remember? So <laughs> we need to encourage him, and uh, he's he's got a great channel. I, as I said before, I love his stop motion stuff. It's fantastic. So have a look at it. He's very creative. It's great. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to have another review for you in the next couple of days. I haven't decided yet what it's going to be, but I'll show you. Next one's either going to be the Tamiya Panzerkampfwagen Offs D in 135, it's another old kit, uh, or I'm going to be doing the West German Leopard A4, but I'll be doing that as the Australian version, uh, which is a little bit different. Uh, so that'll be something to cover on, I'll show you the aftermarket parts for that as well. But I've had this kit sitting here for a while now, and I just want to build it. So we've got those two there. Uh, up and coming in the next few days as we're saying but yeah for now we'll uh, sign off thanks very much for watching and uh, if you have any questions just let us know
Cheers.